Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. We're out in the garden house right now, but I had to come in and do some spot watering. Uh, it's been humid, but uh, that doesn't feed enough to the plants. So, yeah, I'll show you my pears here. I got uh, one there and one up here. Uh, and that's a first year tree. And I got two pears out of it. Uh, nothing on the peaches, but that's a spring peach tree. So, um, it'll be time to prune it pretty soon and uh, have, get it ready for the springtime. Uh, those weird pepper plants over there that I spilled a bag of them, uh, no flowers, no buds on them. Strange, but that's okay. Chicken feed. All right, my apple tree still got some green going to it. And uh, my sweet peppers here, I got uh, some nice red ones down there, so I'll be plucking some of those off. I also have I'm going to be eating a lot of cantaloupe pretty soon here because that one's ready. And this one's ready. And I got one over there that's just about ready. Still got a little green left in it. So I got three three cantaloupe all ready to, to start eating. So um, this one I'll take in tomorrow. I'm going to take that little one in tonight and have that for dessert. My watermelon's ready to harvest also. My bell peppers now are starting to flower, so um, those can keep on going, and I'll have some bell pepper soon. And uh, I got tomatoes over there on the, the vine, so got plenty of tomatoes. I got onions over here ready to harvest. My sweet peas are starting to show some small pods on them, so I'll be getting some more sweet peas before the days or the uh, season's over. And my um, aloe vera is doing great. And uh, that's good. Yes, that's medicinal. My tree is all the way up to the cross member now. So that's uh, over six foot tall. And I planted it uh, last April, uh, April Fool's Day actually. And it was 30 and a half inches tall. And uh, it's six foot tall now. So pretty cool. And this one uh, I plant planted was 22. Uh, and a half inches the same day uh, back on uh, April 1st and uh, that's up probably uh, 37 or 38 inches I didn't measure it but uh, it's doing really well and this one same thing this one's up at the six foot level and uh, these are shade trees I've got seeds for these in the uh, container I'm gonna get those uh, seeds going as soon as the uh, rainy season starts and um, see if I can get a few more of these uh, nice shade trees going that's my, my um, cut off the tomato plants are doing well. These peppers again, they're not showing any flowering, but that's okay. The chickens love the green leaves. And uh, the pumpkin is just running itself out. That's okay. The chickens will eat it. I got uh, tomatoes over here all ready to harvest and eat. And I got cucumbers. There's three of them up there on that vine. And then there's another one down here on this vine. So I'll be getting some of those out and pickling them. Uh, something's been getting in and eating my kale. I think it's the uh, locusts. I see a lot of the flying grasshoppers around. My beets are, I've been eating some of those, so uh, they're doing fine. Carrots doing fine. Onions again are doing fine. My radishes are coming back even though something ate all the greens. And that's a, um, a cherry tomato uh, that I cut off of the... A uh, big cherry tomato over here. I got some cilantro starting to sprout up. Again, here's those peppers that never uh, showed any flowering or budding. But the uh, chickens love the greens. And the uh, um, tomato plants all need to be cut back and heart, uh, really pruned back. So I'm going to be getting to that probably tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll see. All right. So I'm going to walk through the wind. Please uh, hang in with me. Yeah, see, there's one of those grasshoppers out right up there on the outside of the screen, uh, looking to get in here. There's another one up there on the inside of the screen. So, yeah, they they're trying to get in. And the neat thing is, is they when they try to go out through those screens, all the little birds are sitting on a screen waiting for them, and just eat them up. All right. Now we're going through the wind here. Uh, hang in with me for a minute. 
I want to show you what else I've been doing. That rain saw those showers that came through really, um, I don't know, there, there must have been acid in that water because every solar panel had water spots on it and they were nasty water spots. I scrubbed them to get them off. I started with my squeegee and my uh, uh, scrub pad and um, soapy water and that wasn't doing it. So I had to get, actually get out with uh, paper towels and Windex and clean them all up. And I figured, well, since I had the paper towels and Windex out, I was gonna get in here and I cleaned all the batteries off. As you can see, they're all nice and clean. I also put one of those MPPT uh, controllers up there that everybody says is an MPPT. But uh, like I said, there's a thing called false advertisement and uh, you don't want to get nailed by that. But uh, here, here's the label. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. There we go. There's the label and it says 1300 watts input. Okay, so the, at 12 volt, 2600 watts at 24 volts. So it, all the labels are here. I've still got the boxes. I've still got the warranties. So I don't think that uh, somebody wants to be putting those things out there and having to blow up and hurt people's uh, battery banks, things like that. All right. So the maintenance on these today, I did all the maintenance on them, cleaned them all off, cleaned all the tops off. Everything's looking nice and spot free. And then I uh, got my uh, battery filler out here. And uh, this is, if you're going to have a uh, lead acid battery bank, you've got to buy one of these. It's got a two quart capacity. You fill it with your um, distilled water. Don't use tap water. Put it, fill it with distilled water. And all you have to do is take your caps off and press it, press the tip down into the hole and you'll feel it, the, the thing going gloop, 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 gloop on your hand. You can actually feel that. When it stops, you pull it out and these things are foot filled right to the line, just the way they're supposed to be. So I did all of them. They're all, all been refilled, cleaned all the dust off of my inverter and got everything all spotted. Uh, I'll be hooking that other controller up there. This is an MPPT from uh, Windy Nation. It's a, a 30 amp and uh, I've had this one running for a long time, but this is uh, not MPPT, this is PWM. So that's gonna come out of there. This MPPT is gonna come out of there. The old other MPPT I put up there for right now, so that's been replaced by here. But this one has 600 watts of panels coming into it. And that's why it's showing a 0.1 volt higher than the other one, but uh, this one here is also showing uh, 0.1 volt higher. So I've got to straighten out all of this uh, mess here, this tanglement, and uh, I'll be breaking this in the middle, and I'll have half my panels coming into one bar, which I'll move over about a half an inch, and then half of them going into the other one. So I can split up the um, input from my panels half and half to go for go half into one and half into the other or I may just max that one out at 1300 watts and then have the other one um, right installed right beside it and start all my new panels will start going on there all right so real quick before I leave here here's my uh, my readout from my uh, PW uh, PM a, my permanent magnet alternator or my turbine and you see we just jumped to 180 and went back down to 124 98 okay so this is what I stand get standard on my um, wind power now if you watch over here when it comes out to it amps peak and that's watts peak so in that big uh, wind storm that came through the other day I actually got 936.2 watts out of that unit. So that's equal to nine solar panels. And uh, that's great if the sun's not shining. You love to have that, but the sun is shining while it's happening. 
So it's just wasted because the dump load system takes it and dumps it into a uh, heating element to burn it off so it doesn't hurt the batteries. So I was asked, am I happy with my uh, wind turbine and do I wish that I had instead spent the money for a um, uh, more panels and I had to move the Oh, wait a minute. This is supposed to be way over here. Yeah. That's supposed to be cooling that rectifier. All right. So, yeah, I'm glad I got it. It's a 1,685-watt um, wind turbine. But here's what I've learned the hard way about wind turbines. And I've said this before, but I really want to uh, emphasize it. Wind turbines are sold and advertised for their maximum wattage output at the maximum speed that that turbine can handle, that maximum wind speed. Okay, so if you see a turbine being advertised that says it's 500 watts, max and then it says that the, the wind speed is good up to 60 miles per hour you will never see 500 watts unless you reach 60 miles per hour on that wind turbine and it doesn't go down in perfect increments so if you get half that speed if you got 30 mile an hour winds you're not going to get 250 watts you're going to get whatever the thing feels like putting out at that point and then you, they also get, tell you that it starts producing electricity at two miles per hour. Okay, so in a wind at two miles per hour, it starts producing electricity. Yeah, it probably does. But do you know what it's producing? Maybe one watt, two watts. That, that's it. You're getting nothing. One or two watts of wind power is not going to do anything for you. That's not even enough to run a light bulb, okay? So, so no, they're, they're not the best thing in the world, but I'm glad I've got it because it's a supplement and the sun doesn't shine at night. And out here in the desert, when the winter comes, they should call it the winder and put a D in there instead of a T because the winds come. And the winds get, get I've seen them getting up here 65, 70 miles per hour. And that turbine up there is, is rated for 90 miles per hour. So at 90 miles per hour, I'll get 1,685 watts out of it. But I'm not going to see 90 mile an hour winds. That's a hurricane. <laughs> so what I'm seeing out here at 60 miles per hour, I'll be putting out the uh, 900 uh, watts or, or, or a th 900 watts there or 1,000 watts coming in. That's 10 solar panels running at night when there's no sun. So yes, I'm happy I've got it. Do I wish I'd have spent more money on batteries and solar panels? You're darn right I did. But I've got enough to run what I need to run here with my battery bank and the solar panels I've got. Am I at the ideal size for what I need? No. I just have what I need to get by right now. So yes, I'm gonna, I want to add more batteries down here. That's why that shelf is down there. I'm using it for storage right now, but those are for batteries. So that, that's where my battery bank is supposed to be. All right? And then the solar panels. Yeah, I'm, I've got like uh, 1,385 watts of solar panels outside. Well, no, that's not where I want to be. I want to double that. I want to be at 2,600 watts or 2.6. When I did the uh, math on how much I needed and how to size it, those were the numbers I came up with. What I'm running here is adequate. It's getting me by. But uh, all I can run is a small window air conditioner in my bedroom. I can't cool the whole cabin with 
multiple air conditioners because I don't have enough power. So down the line, yes, I'm going to be upgrading the system. I will um, add more solar panels. And trust me, you can never have too many solar panels. Just, just anytime you've got a good deal on them, bite them up, hook them up. You, you, there's, you run off your battery bank. Everything that's in your cabin runs off the battery bank. It does not run off of solar. The solar only keeps the batteries charged. But during the day, when the sun is out, high and hot in the sky, no clouds, clear sky, and you've got really good sun beating down on solar panels, if you've got 3 kilowatt or 3,000 watts or 4,000 watts of solar panels out there collecting solar, and you've got uh, 2,600 watts of uh, battery bank, well, you can run all you want to run all day long, and you're going to have excess electricity coming in, so your batteries will stay charged, and you can run everything during the day. Now remember, when the sun sets, if you don't have a wind turbine like that one up there, then you're not getting any electricity input, so you're running solely off the batteries. you got to have enough battery power to run all of that stuff that you run during the day off of the combination solar and battery together, you've got to have that quantity in battery bank and you've got to have that in watt hours. So it's, it's got to be able to hold for the length of time through a night, eight hours. So you've got, you got to run enough power out of your battery banks for eight hours to run all the stuff in the cabin. Well, like I said, you got to build it up, but I was running on a tight budget. I was running on a tight uh, time schedule. I got out here. I got my battery banks hooked up. I actually started out here with only four of those batteries and six panels, okay? And I was still living okay in here. I couldn't run everything I wanted to run, but I could have my refrigerator running. I could watch TV during the day, not at night. It would drive the batteries down too far, but I could still have uh, a life. So I built my battery bank up to this point. I still need to get lar uh, a larger setup here. And the batteries, of course, because lead in this country is, uh, uh, well, let's not go into the politics of it. But uh, batteries, lead acid batteries, are costing a lot more now. So when I was buying these batteries, I was getting them for $100 each. They're almost $200 each now. Yeah, yeah, double in price. So that's where we stand, and I will be picking up some more batteries. If possible, I'd like to get a total of six more batteries. That completes my total battery bank. That's $1,200 worth of more batteries. So, yep, times are coming. But I've got the, uh, the cores, the old battery cores here, ready to uh, cash in so uh, that'll save me some money on it i'll probably get them at around 169 170 bucks instead of 200 bucks all right that's it everybody i'm gonna go in get a cold one relax and uh, make some dinner i'm gonna go get my cantaloupe have that for uh, dessert and uh, some of those peppers so i can uh, have those with my dinner tonight and uh, i'm going to enjoy i wish you'd do the same G-Bear, reminding you to remind, remember all of those things I told you in all of my videos. Don't forget to subscribe. I need subscribers. I only had 180, I think, this, this month. So we need to build that up a little bit. G-Bear, signing off.